Now, if you know anybody, and of course, Dr. Pena is a, a proud graduate of Capital. Yeah. That's the same program I graduated from. He's also the editor of the magazine. So I want to get started here. We'll, we only have like uh, 20 minutes, uh, but it won't take long to get through what we want to talk about. Um, I'm a retired uh, Marine officer, uh, Com Information Systems officer, and an interim member of this organization. So what I want to talk about today was, from a personal perspective, what has happened in cybersecurity education in the last 20, excuse me, the last two years uh, since COVID-19 outbreak. Uh, a lot of you in the room are on faculty and staff at Capitol. You went through what we went through, but I want to talk about from our perspective. So the, the preamble here, I kind of set this up. Um, back in March, if you get, get, get back in your way back machine back in March 2020, uh, what was going on, we were getting set to have a career fair that weekend in mid-March. We were also so we're right in the middle of our spring term, and the COVID-19 restrictions came down. Fortunately, we were able to have our career day in, in mass. Uh, employees were calling that morning asking, are you still having your event? You heard about the COVID-19 restrictions, right? Yeah, we did. Come on in, we have uh, we have hand sanitizer, we have masks, and we practice our social distancing. So we had our career fair on that day. But some other things happened later that month that impacted not only the university, but students, the faculty, and the staff. They all were affected in different ways by the COVID-19 outbreak. Uh, here at Capitol, we were fortunate, uh, being a technology university, we were already delivering uh, education in a way that would make us a little bit more COVID proof than some other universities here in the uh, in Maryland. Uh, other universities maintain a lot of facilities. They have sports teams, they have facilities, they have cafeterias, they have, they have all of these things that they got to pay for. We didn't have that issue here. So when enrollments uh, drop in certain universities or colleges, they're affected. They still have to run their infrastructure. We are fortunate. Uh, we don't have sports teams. We have frisbee golf. Um, <laughs> we have an esports team. We have things like that. So we weren't affected as much. We we're very lucky, very blessed. So we deliver um, instruction in four different modes: classroom, is what you see. This is an actual classroom. Engineering students actually sit in this classroom uh, through the school term. We have synchronous online. Uh, currently delivered via Zoom, as as most of you probably are doing now. Uh, we have asynchronous online. We have certain programs that are asynchronous. And we have blended where we have classroom combined with a Zoom contingent. Professor will stand here, uh, uh, lecture to the students and also to the online students. So we have four ways of doing it. We were already doing this before COVID. So most colleges and universities uh, have very little online presence in the sense that we understand online. So they were very impacted. They had to make changes within days, weeks, uh, changing their mode of delivery, which was very hard for some of them. Either they didn't have the experience or the technology to do it, so they were very impacted. Students had to learn new technologies, uh, go into some of the issues that we saw from high school students coming in. This is one high school student told me this um, a year ago. I was in high school in Northern Virginia in 2020, and the Black Board for Bridgman, anybody live in Virginia, Northern Virginia? High school, so you, you you know what happened with the Blackboard rollout. Uh, she told me um, it was terrible. I didn't learn anything those three months before coming to Capitol. So those are some of the things that we had to deal with with the inbound freshman students. Is that their senior year was was cut in half basically by COVID, and a lot of knowledge they were brought in that they didn't have. So if uh, students and we know parents are behind students, right? We know. They log in. They're not always they're logged into the class, but they're looking at Netflix or they're playing games on the side. So parents were important in keeping students engaged, even college students engaged when we had classes. Uh, teachers were forced. Teachers went through some culture shock. Anybody teach high school? Okay, they went through culture shock, didn't they? Then I gotta do this own thing. How do I do that? So how do I know the students are there? There's a lot of things. How do I know? IT staffs were, were uh, impacted. How do we train teachers to teach from home, to teach online from school, to engage students in the classroom and the online? The whole different pedagogy. I had to break a lot of glass to get um, academia in total um, or teaching online and engaging students. 
um, the, the COVID-19 rule, the masks, the social distancing, the shots, overwhelming for some people, right? Um, psychologically, we still don't know all the psychological effects that we have from COVID. You know, do, do we really know how we were affected, people in the room, how that changed the way we looked at ourselves, how we interacted with humans? You know, I, I know I, um, I shy away from crowds of people now. I, I'm reluctant to shake hands reluctant to do anything and I'm slowly getting back into that but I was totally out of that for a while and now we got to get back into the things we used to do before some people will never get back to it so we're unprepared computers we, we discovered the digital divide not every kid has a high-speed laptop Does everybody know that we, we didn't know that right before COVID hit not every household in the state of Maryland and Kinship there has high-speed internet uh, wrong assumption wasn't it uh, not everyone knows how to use this software uh, effectively. Not everybody knows how to position themselves on the camera or the proper lighting for uh, for a dark complexion people like me. I had to figure out how to do the lighting. I never had to do that before. So there were things that we had to learn from the fly. Remote access software. So we um, students are um, zooming in and zooming out. I talked about uh, kids are on Netflix and playing games. Uh, while they're in their class. How could you detect that without a parent actively involved? It's kind of hard to figure out are they really in my class. Um, screen, I had a student to create a screen name called Connected, you know, <laughs> and it stayed up there the whole class. So I finally figured out, you ain't really connected, are you? <laughs> Zoom bombing, we had our first Cyber Saturday event that March, and um, the Zoom bombing probably didn't have a name yet. But we got Zoom bombed our first online experience. Luckily, my side of the student knew how to kick the person out and lock them out. A lot of elementary schools and churches didn't know how to do that. So it was a horror show for a lot of the Zoom. So you had to learn Zoom fatigue. I'm living in Zoom land all day. Anybody still doing that? You guys want to break out of Zoom land, right? So you'll go back to the classroom or come back in to an in-class environment. So, Lost years. All those years really lost. Conversation. Do you think uh, the last two years were lost? Anybody? Uh, so, being a student, learning in academia, some of that to get through from school and teach me was very lost. That's something that that people have been through different domains that they have to learn. You know, you have an auditory and visual campus, and you have an aesthetic group, and that wasn't necessary. I believe it should be the same age ever. If you only did one portion, the age would have to stop and apply to other portions. You know, it was a necessary barrier. But I think we're saying email to the professors, and depending on the time, your time zone versus their time zone, that information gap is being, is being stretched even further because you weren't getting the information back to you in a certain period of time in order to, for your brain to, uh, to pile on information that was true to you were previously learning. So then, by the time you got that answer back from the teacher, your your brain is being dug or being lost in whatever information that you were trying to achieve via that time frame. So I have to say that it wasn't necessarily conducive to some people that weren't able to function strongly in the environment that school was in. Appreciate the comments. Uh, and uh, I, I know you're talking about you've already moved on to the next assignment probably because you didn't get that answer like you would gotten in the classroom. Uh, it's very delayed and you know professors are busy and it takes a couple of days to get back to you. So um, the uh, sudden this I can say for myself students were in, we we first went online uh, my freshman class I really lost the kind of contact I like to have with them. A lot of the freshmen honestly by the time they got to sophomore I didn't I didn't really know them like I'd like to know them so so there was something lost for me as a professor. Um, also, we went to masks. Even when we went back to the classroom, uh, the wearing of masks, I saw people, we came back this fall, and I saw faces that I didn't recognize. And they'll say, no, I was in your class. Yeah, but you're wearing a mask the whole time. <laughs> I lost, I didn't have a face to recognize. So I lost, I personally did lose some things with the relationship with my students because I couldn't see them, I couldn't see their entire face. So I can say there is something to that. Um, isolation. Some students uh, felt isolated. Uh, some students with special needs loved the online because they didn't have to go to school and face, if they had situations at school that they didn't want to face, 
our line was perfect for them, they were happy. And there are lots of uh, uh, case studies of that. But for the most part, most students want to be with their counterparts. Our students came right. back. They came back, and they necessarily want to come back to the classroom in 2021. They wanted to come back because they wanted to be with each other in the residence hall. We would have classes in these same classrooms. They would not be here. They'd be online, but in the residence hall. So I don't know if you guys know, uh, had that experience, but we had that experience. I just want to at least come to the classroom, just see who I am, you know. Just, uh, so Zoom fatigue is overtaking us all. Return to campus. Um, our return to campus was pretty successful. Um, we followed Prince George's County's uh, protocols. We, we followed them very well. Uh, we had very few cases relative to some of the schools that opened and suddenly had to close. We didn't have that situation. Enrollments have dropped. Uh, because of the digital divide, a lot of parents lost their jobs. Uh, a lot of our kids were affected. Uh, the, the money that would have taken to go back to school, they needed that just to live. So the community colleges uh, experienced an 18% drop in enrollment. They have not recovered yet. Uh, we've experienced uh, not as big a drop as that, but uh, we, we know that there's something going on out there with enrollments, and we're hoping that they return. <laughs> there were some benefits to COVID. There were some benefits. Uh, the uh, digital di digitalization that we should have done years ago, we were forced to do. I used to have students lined up outside my office with forms to sign. Um, COVID, they couldn't do that. We we digitized all the registrar's forms, and uh, we also uh, scheduled a lot of Zoom conferences. The, the lines still not have returned. The students love it. We love it. I, I don't want to see them. Personally, but we got into the mode of uh, I'll just schedule a Zoom with my professor. I'll send him the form I need to sign. Uh, more collaborative technologies are being implemented so that we can work better together. I, I say Zoom a lot, but there's others out there. You got the Microsoft Teams and all the others out there. I'm not, Zoom doesn't pay me when they say their name. So it's like Xerox. Um, most teachers have learned how to deliver online. A lot of them say, oh, I don't like to do that. but. Uh, they, they've now seen if you if you engage the proper techniques to make sure your students are engaged, don't just lecture, don't make it a one-way thing. Really engage students, do, do different things, do a class, do in-class assignments, uh, have them present in class a lot more. I make every student present now, number one, to make sure they understand it, number two, to make sure they're out there, right? So you got to change the way you do things if you're going to fully engage them. And now uh, education is more widely available now. Uh, online education makes it doesn't matter where you live, doesn't matter uh, what major you're in. Uh, online education is now presented opportunities to more people around the world uh, to attend our schools, not just U.S. students, but students around the world. Employers, I want to address employers. What happened during that time? Internships, a lot of internships got canceled in 2020, just outright canceled. Uh, students were disappointed. You got to sit. Not only do you have to sit home, but you don't have an internship. Uh, our students do internships at Capital as part of uh, how they build their uh, job skills. So in 2020, we told employers, is there any way you can give them an internship? So the next year, we saw more virtual internships. Uh, as the employers begin to work from home, why can't the interns work from home, right? So they, they found their three and said, I think if you can manage a workforce remotely, you can manage an intern remotely too. But we found that an in intern got, got blamed for a hack, right? They didn't change the default test. You better know that. You're all right, I think. <laughs> the intern did it. Um, employers in STEM field understood. I was talking to a chemistry teacher the other day, and she said, my biology majors, chemistry majors, employers got to understand, they're not going to know some things. Because they weren't not in the lab, they, they, they didn't they didn't they didn't see the mixture turn orange. You know, I remember your high school chemistry class. If the thing didn't end up orange, you know, you didn't do something right, right? When they said that, that those type of skills are going to be missing, employers got to understand that uh, there are some gaps. You can't duplicate a chemistry lab at home, at least not safely, right? Uh, there are some virtualizations, but it's nothing like working with the test tubes and the chemicals. Uh, in a lab. So the, the medical field in particular uh, has been impacted. We in cyber are lucky, right? We have cyber range. We were already COVID ready, I think, in cyber security. So we weren't as affected, unless your program is totally on ground. 
then you had to figure out a way to deliver a uh, lab, a virtual lab environment uh, to a student no matter where they're located. So um, our work's employers uh, continue to do the virtual internships, uh, continue to recruit students. If you are, another word, or is, yeah, uh, industry, uh, I was very happy during COVID-19 that response from industry in particular, I've never seen as much free stuff, right, as I've seen the last two years. Everybody agree with that? If you didn't get certified about the last two years, it's something about <laughs> You didn't take advantage of free stuff. I mean, it's out there. More free training to a broader audience. Uh, whether you're what we call a career changer, you're out there waiting tables or you're a social worker, and I have people that come to our program that for that. This is not cybersecurity. It's not an easy field to break into. We make it hard. We make it hard, don't we? You got to understand our language, you got to get certified, uh, don't have experience, we don't necessarily want to deal with you, do you want to go to background check? We make it hard, so we got to figure out how to make it easier to get into cybersecurity, or we're never going to hit our numbers. So we're remote, more remote positions need to be created. If you are, your organization is going remote, bring your workers in, the, the uh, younger workforce, uh, they're not particularly one to work in an office about five days a week. Uh, we're going to have to recognize that, and uh, employers, I'm speaking to employers now, yeah, you're going to have to figure out how to attract them to your business by offering that flexible work or remote. Some jobs are higher remote. I've seen a lot of jobs on uh, Bank of America, Navy Federal, some of them are hiring to stay where you are and work for us. More of that needs to be created. And uh, continue to offer the free training and certifications, I would say, if, if that's a benefit of COVID-19, it's a good benefit, is that people were at home, they had a little bit more time, we weren't driving to work, right? We had an extra three hours to play with every day, right? So getting that certification was a good idea. So education going forward, um, I think a lot of the positive changes are not going away anytime soon. And I don't want to see them go away, honestly. I like, I like the flexibility of having different modes to deliver education, uh, remote internships, uh, the different work, work style situations depending on the individual. If they're talented, you got to figure out a way to attract them and keep them. And the only way to do that is you got to understand uh, where, the, uh, where these um, recent graduates are mentally and what they value versus what we value. And that's what I want to cover today. I don't know about the time. Without any more discussion, anybody else have any comments they want to share? This was just from the capital perspective. If I was um, from a liberal arts school, uh, my my show would have been a lot more, a lot more difficulties, a lot more things that went wrong, a lot more transition issues because they weren't used to, you know, a lot of the schools here in the state of Maryland, uh, they just weren't ready for it. High schools weren't ready middle schools, elementary schools, anybody that has an online presence, they weren't ready. Everybody went through growing. We went through our own pains um, in a different way, but we made it through, so we're a lot stronger for that. Yes. Uh, so you mentioned um, the cybersecurity um, field and all that. What are some of the suggestions that you could give to someone who is saying, okay, I want to do cybersecurity, they're saying that into the personnel, but I cannot seem to get a job, I cannot seem to get Someone to look at my resume, someone to challenge me. What are some of the things that you can do or advise to other people who are new and would like to be a part of the job security? Yeah, good question. Um, some of the free training that I've noticed. Yeah. So, so I've, you know, I work in private sector, I've got several different gigs. Uh, one, go to the local security meetup and meet the people there because they will be able to give you a forward. If you can have a, a conversation with them, you can't you know, go back. You gotta be able to stop playing. You gotta be able to engage with them and have you know, your own conversations so they can build the trust with you. But I know in our community, since we have brought people up, we have showed up a day and they had the opportunity, they would call other kids and they said, hey, good opportunity for you to go to this place. The second best way is we recruit people internally. So go get a job at the help desk at our company. Start that, start on the IT side. Because that is where we, on the cyber side, get to understand what you all know and build up on trust. Because cyber, uh, it is a lot of trust. I 
would hire a person who I trust more so than somebody who's just coming along the street like I don't know. Do they have the service? Because the jobs are already going to be served. And there are a lot of people out there who have paper search that has absolutely no idea what they're doing. So we have to kind of have that mind. So I'll start making the contacts now so that down the road when you do look for a job, uh, you know who to talk to or have to talk to or have some experience doing stuff like that. Our number one hire is for the years that I work with people, and other people who like to as well, uh, tier one, tier two. them on the uh, other side of the community. To the point where one of my one person who I mentored, he came to me yesterday and said, uh, since I left the last company that I was at, my salary is down to 200 percent And his degree wasn't even in technology, it was banking. So uh, he's you know, just a uh, in the man over there. So I hate to tell you this, but when you're working in cyber, you're going to have a lot of time to go to even the corporate world. Where you're going to have to have messages sent off to people, they may not respond to it. You know, that's that's part of it. And um, the one, the one of the biggest changes that I see with all this, you know, is that when I started doing this in my career, there was no cyber tourism or paper So you had to spend a lot of time looking things up on your own. There wasn't any other sense of community. So you had to um, work without ever knowing who you're talking to. A lot of those stuff. Mind, the chat forms that I've seen, and other things. So you have to be able to own the skills so that you can go out and talk to somebody about anything in the world and start to build that rapport with them. You know, for me, I'm, I'm an introverted person, so I might play an extroverted person in the world because I live in Las Vegas and I would spend time at a bar or a hotel room. Hotel makers are the densest people in the world and the hardest people to talk to. No offense if you're a hotel <laughs> It really built my social skills. So now, when I go into meetings, you know, when you see movies, that are going to go on. So you have to fill that kind of gap. So I'm always there for you know, that one job in your face, or you're not, or you're like that, because of the social. So learn those types of things. Go to the social. Go to the meetups. Play your social. Learn how they go. Be patient and talk to those people who have the same type of community. You know, that will that'll get you a lot farther. So I have one other which, which, which company are you from, by the way? Okay. I work for a company called Show Me Find and Sell. And we are opening for our cyber people now. Um, Show Me Find and Sell, we are a digital company. We hire people like you can see. Um, if you're a cloud architect, we have skills that can talk to you. Thank you. Yeah, that one's I asked. So um, I suggest you guys look at the nice um, cybersecurity um, workforce framework online. It is fabulous. What it does is it shows you 54 different jobs that you know we have decided that we're going to use the cybersecurity feature. Check and find out what you want to do there. Start looking for the job in that area. That's part of it. So I'm a grant writer for the university, but I like to ask questions. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I actually write cybersecurity grants for water grants and all that. And my background is neutral, but I still. Um, I like to give people information because I'm always trying to get people to do some uh, STEM field in the STEM field. So I start I'm doing grants in middle school and all that. So I'm just trying to get information. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was a good question. So I'm looking for skills. What do you need to learn about it? You know, that's the kind of you have to know somebody to give you a contact. You know, getting to know somebody is you know, one of the best things you know. Uh, like going to local meetups. Just one last thing, Bill. If you want to get build a home lab, volunteer to run the lab at your church or somewhere. You know, there's some things you can do without being in the field that will prepare you to get into the field. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you.